Brook Shabbat Yom, brothers and sisters, Hebrews in Jamaica, the Caribbeans, the West, to the four corners of the earth, scattered greeting. This Shabbat lesson we're going to title Should the Hebrew man cover his head in prayer? Should the Hebrew man cover his head in prayer, brothers and sisters? We're going to start with the scriptures. Take a look at your screen. We're going to start with Corinthians, 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 Corinthians 1, right? This dealing with the role in worship, the roles in worship, right? We're going to take it, we're going to start from 6 to 8, right? If a woman does not cover her head, she should have her hair cut off. If a woman does not cover her head, she should have her hair cut off and if it is shameful for a woman to have her hair cut or shaved off she should cover her head if a woman does not cover her head she should have her hair cut off and if it is shameful for a woman to have her hair cut or shaved off she should cover her head a man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of Eliyahu. A man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of Eliyahu. A man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of Eliyahu, but the woman is the glory of man. But the woman is the glory of man. But the woman is the glory of man, for he for man did not come from woman, but woman from man. For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. So, you see, Brown he says, verse 7, right? When it says a man ought not to cover his head, right? Why it says that, Brown he says, because man represents Mashiach. So, by covering his head in prayer and in worship to the Mosiah, Right, he is disarming the Mashiach who is, he, who is the, his head, you see. And the same way, when it says right here about the woman is the glory of man, if the woman present or carry herself in a derogative manner, lewdness, lavishness, loudness, she disarmed her man. Because why? The scripture says, But the woman is the glory of the man. So, whatever the woman, uh, However, the woman carries herself reflects the man. A lot of our females in our community do, do not understand and nor have been taught by their mothers concerning these attributes, these uh, wonderful and glorious attributes. Because you are an extension of your man. Because that's, that's, that's your husband. You and him are becoming, you and, you and him is one. You are become one right now. You see, brother and sister. So... Whatever you do reflects on the man. Whatever the man does reflects on the woman. You understand, brothers and sisters? Keep looking at the screen, brothers and sisters. Let's move on. Timotheus or Sean. Timotheus or Sean. First Timothy 2, 13. For Adama, Adam was formed first. And then Hawa, Eve. For Adama, Adam was formed first. Then Hawa, Eve. Bereshit, Genesis 2, 21. So Yahuwah Eliyahu caused the man to fall into a deep sleep and while he slept, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the area with flesh, brothers and sisters. Okay, brothers and sisters, so what uh, Bereshit, Genesis 2, 21 is saying to you, brothers and sisters, right? So in the King James Version of the Bible, in Bereshit, 221 says and Yahuwah Eliyahu caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adama Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof hmm? the biblical explanation brothers and sisters of Bereshit Bereshit 221 is that Eliyahu created a woman from Adam's Adam rib to be his companion and wife setting the original example of marriage the two were created to be perfect brothers and sisters for each other. And Adama named her woman because she was taken out of man. Right? So we can look at some other 
knows in Genesis, brothers, he says, Adama and Hawa Eve were naked, right? But unashamed before sin entered the world. In Hebrew, man is Ish, I-S-H, and woman is Isha, Aisha, right? The conclusion comment in Genesis 2.24 states that a man and his wife are to become one flesh, brothers and sisters. And Eliyahu recognizes that it is not good for a man to be alone and make woman to be his helper, companion, and wife, establishing the pattern of Eliyahu designed for mankind between a man and woman, brothers and sisters. Huh? Also, two brothers and sisters in Genesis, right? We also can see that Yahuwah Eliyahu calls in a deep sleep to fall upon Adama. This sleep represents also a state of complete vulnerability and surrender, brothers and sisters. So, depending on the moon, Yah, to rise us up again for us to see in life. That is why it's good to pray. And ask Mosai to take it through the night so you could see the next day, brothers and sisters. Tomorrow is promised to no one. You understand? Tomorrow does not promise to no one. Okay? And so, brothers and sisters, what does it mean that the husband is the head of his wife? So, what does it mean, brothers and sisters, that the husband is the head of his wife? I want you to understand that the head of every man is the Mashiach, the head of a wife is her husband, and the head of the, of the Mashiach is Eliyahu, right? So in verse 3 of Corinthians, Corinthians 11 and 3, outlines a series of overlapping relationships. The head of every man is the Mashiach, head of a wife is her husband, and the head of Mashiach is Eliyahu. Anyone familiar with this scholarship? On this issue knows that the little word head Kefali has killed a lot of trees. So brothers so the word Kefali is Greek, right? The word Kefali is Greek. The word Kefali has multiple meanings including literal head, topmost part of the body, source or mouth of rivers, top or summit or mountains, ends of things, authority over ruler, prominent Preeminent foremost. Right, so in the New Testament, Kefali is debated to have different meanings, including authority or ruler, source or provider, and prominent. Some say that Kefali can be used as a metaphor for authority, leadership, the topmost part of the body, or ends of the things. Right? In the New Testament, some translate Kefali as presupposed authority, superior rank, or leader. Others translate it as source of life, top or crown, or exalted originator, brothers and sisters. Huh? Kefali. Scholars using their expertise in Greek and the latest computer software have gone back and forth in articles and books, arguing whether Kefali means authority over or source, like the head of a river, it is source. Others have argued that the word means prominent, preeminent, or foremost in the end, context suggests that Kefali in verse 3 must have something to do with authority. Roy Siampa and Brian Rosner are right. Even if by head, Paul means more prominent, preeminent partner or less likely one through whom the other exists. His language and, and the flow of the argument seems to reflect and assume hierarchy through mm -hmm. which glory and shame flow upward from those with lower status to those above them. In this context, the word almost certainly refers to one with authority over the other. Furthermore, we have other examples in Pa'al writing where Kifali must mean something like authority over. In Ephesians 1, Paul says that the Mashiach has been seated at Eliyahu's right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and all things have been placed under his feet and he has been made head kefali of all things to the, to the body, right?
The context in mind that Kefali referred to Mashiach's authority over the body, not merely that the body has its origin in the Mashiach. Likewise, in Ephesians 5, Paul says, Wives are to submit to their husband, for the husband is the head of the wife Kefali, of the wife even as Mashiach is the Kefali of the body. Ephesians 5, 22 and 23, citing the headship of the husband as a reason for the wife's submission makes little sense if headship implies only source or origin without any reference to male leadership. Kefali, in at least these two instances in Ephesians, must be an authority over and there are no grammatical or contextual reason to think that Paul is using Kefali in a different way in, in Rishon, Corinthian Rishon 11. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we should understand first Corinthian Rishon, Rishon, Corinthians 11 and 3 as saying that the Mashiach has authority over mankind, the husband has authority over his wife. The Greek words for man and woman are the same for husband and wife, brothers and sisters. So, in that terminology, in that um, context, brothers and sisters, when the scriptures when, when the scripture said the husband has authority over the wife, that means the wife, the husband has authority over the body of the woman, and the woman have authority over the body of the man. That's how it goes, brothers and sisters. You understand? That's how it goes. So a woman does not have authority over body as far as you know. What I mean, you know, sexual relations and stuff like the same thing with the woman to the man. Both of them have authority over each other when it comes to the body. And with holding sex and using it as a tool to harm the man. That's that's demonic and that's wrong, because you're allowing the demon, the devil, to come in between both of you and take both of you to go and commit adultery, and break up your relationship. So, uh, so affection between both husband and wife is very key for a healthy and stable and long-lasting marriage, huh? Uh, Eliyahu has authority over Mashiach, thus we have male and female, equal and interdependent. Rishon Corinthians 11, 11 to 12, relating to one another within a differentiated order. In previous years, some complementarians made too much of the fact that Paul relates the husband-wife relationship to the headship of Eliyahu over Mashiach. To be sure, there is an important point to be made from Eliyahu, Mashiach's parallel in verse 3, namely the headship does not imply ontological inconsistent with equality of word, honor, and essence. But even here we should be careful to note that there is an economic expression of the sun in, in view in verse 3, Mashiach, not an eminent or ontological expression. Example, the son. We should not use the Trinity as our model for the marriage relationship, both because it is not necessary for complementarianism to be true and because the metaphysical inner workings of the infallible Trinity do not readily allow for easy lifestyle applications. In fact, it is striking how the New Testament often grounds ethical imperatives in the Gospel. Right? It is striking how the New Testament often grounds ethical imperatives in the gospel example, marriage as an outworking of the Mashiach and the body, but never in the internal order of Eliyahu. If we are, to, if we are talking about the economic trinity, the activity of Eliyahu and the work of three persons in creation and redemption, we can certainly say that the Son acts from the Father, while the Father does not act from the Son. There is an internal ordering tax of the Trinity that finds expression in time. And yet the language of the eternal subordination of the Son is not the best language to describe this order, nor do we ever see in Nasi tradition that the persons of the Trinity are distinguished by relationship or authority and submission. Traditionally, the way in which the persons of the Godhead have been distinguished and technically they are distinct 
we suggest three hypotheses not different which would suggest another oesia is not by rules or by eternal relationship of authority and submission but by paternity filiation filiation and separation to but in other way the father is the father and not the son or the spirit the son is the son and not the father or the spirit and the spirit is the spirit and not the father or the son by virtue of the father's unbegottenness as father the son's generation from the father and the spirit's procession from the father and the son of that all of that to say, brothers, is that we should be extremely cautious about making sweeping statements about the Trinity from verse 3. What we can say from verse 3, and this is all we really need to say, is that headship does not have to be harsh. For Eliyahu is the head of the Mashiach, and that to be understood, understand the headship of another does not have to be the meaning. Again, brothers and sisters, what we can say from verse 3, and this is all we really need to say, is that the headship does not have to be harsh. For Eliyahu is the head of the Mashiach, and that to be under the headship of another does not have to be the meaning. For Mashiach is under the headship of Eliyahu, his father, as Calvin puts it. Yet inasmuch as he became a mediator in order to bring us near to Eliyahu, his father, he is set beneath not that divine essence which resides in him in all fullness and in which he does not defer from his father at all but as to, uh, but as to his making himself our brother. So what is covering, brothers and sisters, huh? What is covering? Every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head since it is the same as if her head were shaven. Every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head since it, since it is the same as if her head were shaven. Rishan Korytian Rishan. 11 and 5. Some argue that the head covered in Rishon Kortiams 11 and 5 is long hair. After all, doesn't verse 15 tell us that the hair, that her hair is given to her for a covering? Long hair though is almost certainly not the covering itself. Verse 15 does not have to mean that long hair is given instead of a covering. It can mean simply that hair is given as a covering. The argument from verse 15, 14 and 15 suggests that long hair is not the covering required in worship but is indicative or indicative of the fact that a covering is required. See also verse 6 where an uncovered head is not identical to but is as disgraceful as a shaved head roman women in late antiquity were to be marked above all else by pudicitia latin for modesty pudicitia or pudictia yes pudictia latin for modesty and for a mature woman in uh, a mature woman to wear her head unveiled huh as or was one of the chief signs of sexual modesty. Roman women in late antiquity were to be marked above all else by pudictia, Latin for modesty, and for a mature woman to wear her hair unveiled it was one of the chief signs of sexual immodesty. Culture gives us the symbols of masculinity and femininity. While nature dictates that men should embrace their manhood and women embrace their womanhood. So what was the covering, brothers and sisters? Huh? What was the covering? One educated guess is that it was some type of shawl. More than likely, it was not a veil as we see in many Muslim countries because face covering were not common in Greco-Roman culture. The covering for all was in mind was has in mind was possibly a small wrap around scarf like garment that could be placed on the head when praying and prophesying what head what head does the woman dishonor what head 
does the woman dishonor. Every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncover dishonor her head since it is the same as if her head were shaven. One of the difficulties in this section is that the word head is used throughout the passage with different, sometimes multiple meanings. Thus, every man who prays or prophesies with his head cover dishonor his head means that every man who covers his physical head dishonors his spiritual head that is Mashiach. And what about the woman? She too dishonors her spiritual head when her physical head is uncovered. The head she dishonors is by extension Mashiach but most immediately her husband. The wife's action reflects her husband because she is his glory. And repeat, and what about the woman? And what about the woman? What about her, brothers and sisters? Huh? What about her? She too dishonors her spiritual head when her physical head is uncovered. The head she dishonors is by extension the Mashiach, but most immediately her husband. But most immediately her husband. But most immediately her husband. The wife's action reflect on her husband because she is his glory. First Corinthians 11 and 7, Proverbs 31, Mishali 31 and 23. The problem in Corinth likely involved men and women. We can see how a Lysintia's uncovered wife would bring shame to her husband, but men may have also been to blame. In early Roman period period, men often used the dress and look of their wives in an effort to seek status for themselves. In the early Roman period, period, men often used the dress and look of their wives in an effort to seek status for themselves. I could see that today, this cross dresses. Yes, I mean, these cross dresses, brothers and sisters. This is from Roman time. Edom. And Edom, brothers and sisters, huh? Esau. Hmm? In the early Roman Empire period, men often used the dress and look of their wives in an effort to seek status for themselves, while it is unlikely that husband wanted their wife to participate in worship on veil. It is likely that men were seeking glory from their wives as much as some women may have been in danger of bringing shame to their husband. What does Paul mean by authority, brothers and sisters? Huh? What does Paul mean by authority? That is why a wife ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Uh, Corinthians 11 and 10. Most English translations speak of a sign or symbol of authority even though there is no word for sign or symbol in the Greek of Roshan Corinthians 11 and 10. Most commentators are, are agreed. Most commentators are agreed that Paul is not saying that the woman should have authority over her own head. That conclusion does not easily follow from the rest of our argument. Instead, we are right to think that the head covering is the sign or symbol of authority. But what kind of authority, brothers and sisters? What kind of authority? Traditionally, interpreters understood verse 10 to be talking about a sign of the husband's authority over his wife. More recently, however, many argue that the head covering is a sign of authority. The wife has to pray or prophesy. I don't think the two interpretations are all that different, but as he said. Right? So in both views, the wife must have a sign of on her head that she has not thrown off her husband's authority if she is to pray or prophesy. In other words, the head covering functions as a sign of submission to her husband and as a sign she is therefore able to pray prophesy in the assemblies. And this is what is missing in our, our community balances. There's no shame, no respect for the authority of men. Man nowadays are, are 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 measured by the amount of money he makes, and that's not so. Not just that, but it's about man is more than just money. I keep asking the question: What if? And it will gonna happen when the system crash and money is up no value. What are you gonna measure the man with now, huh? 
Huh? What are you going to measure the man with, woman? Ye daughters of Zion. Children of Israel. Hebrews. What then would you measure the man with? Because money is of no value now. Huh? So we must come back to the fundamental. You know what I mean? The love for each other. The likeness for each other. Put the Mashiach in the center of your relationship. And work together. Don't put all the burden on your man. And the man don't put all the burden on the woman. Come together and unite. Because the scripture said two heads are better than one. You, it make life easier. Walking through life. It make it such easier and less burdensome. If both of you work together. And, and both work together. Commune with each other. Help each other out. You see. Okay, bro, so I'm going to end the shower letter with some reference. You can go check these guys out. Right, Roy E. Kiampa or Siampa and Brian S. Rosner, the first letter to the Corinthians, Grand Rapids, M.A. Erdmans, 2010, 509. For more on Kifali, C. Wayne Grudem, Evangelical Feminism and Biblical Truth. An analyst of more than 100 disputed questions, Wheaton the Second Crossway 2012 201-11-554-99, John Calvin, Men, Women and Order in the Body, Three Sermons by John Calvin, Chan Seth Kionitsky, Dallas Presbyterian Heritage 1992-16, see Cal or Kali Harper from Shame to Sin, the Christian Transformation of Sexual Morality in Late Antiquity, Cambridge, MA, Harvard University Press 2013, 41 to 42, brothers and sisters. Right? So on that note, Brook Yahoo, what is it? Brook Yahoo, Shama, Shiak, Shina, Vishina, Blessed Love and Shalom.